What is Gucci backup singers? It is your boy Joey and welcome back to my channel for a brand new video. If you guys are new here, that means you are not a backup singer and we need to fix that honey today. All you gotta do is go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well as hit that bell to be notified when I upload brand new videos like this and then poof honey, you are now a backup singer and welcome to the family you guys. Listen, this is my final reaction of 2021 y'all and I just had to wait for this. I was like, you know what, what am I gonna react to today? And then I was like, wait a minute. And Anthony Javi, I said that he was releasing the video with Rambo, and I was like, okay, I know what I'm watching. I know what I want my final reaction to be, and that is this one, y'all. So listen, I'm finna shut it on up and do what we came to do, and that is me and y'all, okay? Watching Anthony Padilla sit down with Rambo. Oh my goodness, this is about to be cute. I'm gonna shut it on up right now and do what we came to do, honey, and let's press play. Here we go. All right, you guys, so I got the video pulled up and I'm pressing play. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. My name's Anthony Padilla. I'm and excited. We'll uncover the truth about why he's kept his face hidden and the severe discomfort that he pushed through in order to reveal his eyes for the first time. Right. And we'll also hear some intense stories about what forced him to grow up so quickly. By the end of this video, we'll find out if entertaining oh, millions Lord. of followers you can have me crying, made, Anthony. The anonymous has been entirely gratifying, or if amassing one of the most engaged fan bases on the internet has come with struggles more cruel than anyone could. Oh, I believe it has. Oh, I'm excited and nervous and emotional. Hello, Rambo. Rambo. I just had you on here seven months ago. You turned 18 and you graduated. <laughs> So had a billboard. Yes. That's still the coolest thing I think that has ever happened. Did you get to see it in person? I did not get to see it in person, sadly, but I saw like everyone else that like got to see it. And people actually yeah. like drove to see it. I was just like, oh dang, maybe I do have a little bit more of an impact than I think. <laughs> Anyone who's not familiar with who you are that's mm -hmm. watching this is probably like, what's up with the face yeah, mask and yeah. sunglasses inside? Basically, I just like, uh, just don't really like using the camera all the time. So then I also don't like showing my face out there. So that's why I like like keep it hidden you've never shown your face online and content that you created no no it's mainly actually because um i remember the first time that i like tried to make an irl video and i actually wasn't wearing the mask and glasses and then i realized like when i was editing was i cannot stand like looking at this whenever i like see my face for like long periods of time i have a very warped perception of it to the point where oh like, wow i see it it causes me like anxiety and panic sometimes mm -hmm. especially when like i try to understand that other people may be perceiving it in certain ways as well oh wow have you always felt this kind of facial dysmorphia or um, is it something you develop? I mean, it's kind of something that I've always felt, but then it became very heightened, of course, of like the whole like becoming like a public figure. But then I found like the solution. Oh, my heart. Glasses. You did just do an eye review yeah. the yeah. other day. Yeah, I did. You yeah. revealed your eyes. To the Broke internet. the internet. I will see you guys then. How did that all happen? Basically, at the beginning of my stream, like when I pressed the go live button, I was just like, it's the one year of National Rambu Day. You're all yes, Rambu Day. For a little bit. In the last like 15 minutes was when I was decided like, okay, this is what's happening. So I like tried to like steer the conversation so that my friends would leave. You wanted them to go so I could reveal your eyes <laughs> to the world. Go. Stream when one of them's coming back and me just going, Leave me alone. I'm trying to have an intimate moment yeah, with hundreds like, of thousands like, of people. Yeah, and then I did it, and then I just turned off my phone, and then just, like, kind of just, like, sat there and, like, just, like, sitting and contemplating. But here you are. You showed up today without your glasses on. Yeah. Is that how comfortable you're starting to get? Yeah, I never really wore my glasses out in public, like, anyway. It was just mainly on, like, the internet. Because I know that most people are very respectful, and they won't try to, like, take a photo from a phone. Like, right. I, I'm able to comfortably walk around in just without the glasses, and I have been able to do that for a while, thankfully. Did your friends come in and congratulate you, or, yeah. like... Were they yeah. proud of you? That's the main reason why I came here was because I didn't want to be alone during it because I know that if I were, was alone during it, then I might have gone into like the rabbit hole of like searching up like the negative things and having oh, something no. like that critiqued and something yeah. that I already critiqued myself mm. because of it. It's just like not really something that I wanted to have to necessarily deal with all the time. And little did he know, 
that the support was going to be huge. Listen, when I tell y'all I am so proud of him, I am still proud of him. Rambo is literally one of the most mature, authentic, realest content creators that I literally, I don't know, but I know. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just proud of him. Okay, every little step he takes, we're going to be rooting and screaming. Come on, Rambo. Did you start to see yourself through the lens of what comments might say yeah exactly and then especially like when you like look in the mirror for too long and then like stuff starts becoming warped and everything mm. it just doesn't just not a good time in general i am again thankfully getting help for it it's definitely good that i'm aware of kind of what i have to do so when you say you're getting help does that mean that you're like talking with a therapist about your yeah you're talking with a therapist about it talking with like other content creators that is incredible that the thing. do you plan to do more streams without your glasses and reveal your eyes more. Before I did like an eye reveal stream, I was like terrified to move in the wrong angle. Oh, really? Like, so I see your eye through the side of your glasses? Yeah, during like my first actual face game stream, I remember like I stayed in like one position the whole <laughs> You're time. Like, Hi, I'm a gamer. Like, and then I turned off my camera to turn. And that's part of the reason why I was able to do the eye reveal was because I've been like getting that help, which has been good. And oh, I love that. that. The hopes of revealing your face someday? I think part of me, you know, like, like once reveal my face, just to kind of reveal my face. And also part of me knows that like, I don't really have to. It's more becoming part of like the brand. You know, exactly. Brand. You, you do not have to show your face. face reveal at five million oh, subscribers. Man. Yeah. And you're like, you're almost Maybe. at four now. Maybe, honestly. I mean, you never know, like, unless it reaches it like really, really fast. Do you feel pressured to do a face reveal because you promised? I know that if I do hit five mil, I'm still not ready. I can probably just make a video saying like, hey, this is where I'm at with everything. And that's just another like great thing about the fan base that they just completely understand. Yes, we understand honey how long ago did you start making content a year and two months ago was that the very first video you ever uploaded to the internet i don't really count like my start of making content as like on the first day of my video upload i, I count it as like the first day of like things actually like starting me becoming serious about it oh. i just had like a um an old channel and, wait um, how old are you oh, i don't know i think it was like 12 12, 13 ish. What was that content like? Random Minecraft stuff, pretty much. I, mean, I can't actually pull them up. Nice! Yeah, I actually have a stream here. <laughs> How many people were you, were you streaming to at the time? Oh, I think like two. <laughs> And what are you streaming to now? My maximum ever has been almost like 300,000, I think. Okay, let's see what your oh, life was like. Wow. Right. Should be live. Okay, so. Hello. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be just like playing with viewers pretty much anyone really so yeah so i'm just gonna be streaming and everything there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of like going in circles i have no. i have not changed at all <laughs> intro, so that when i uploaded that first video you know nothing happened from it of course the main thing that like gave me like that like really really big drive was i started to dm different content creators on instagram i dm like a uh, dream i dm george i dm like tommy i dm Tubbo. I... all your peers now i dm like phil as well and then yeah. phil was actually the one that responded he was just like i'm not one for a critique but oh, it looks wow. like you're having fun so keep at it because the video was like getting no views i yeah. can actually see exactly when his view was and how, <laughs> and how long he watched how long like, did he okay. watch he watched like 60 percent of the video and i was Whoa, like you know what? that's good that's a lot that kind of gave me like the boost i was just like i'm gonna continue to do this like i'm wow. Yay. Like, TikTok is, like, really really easy to get views on for some reason and then i uploaded the first tiktok it started to do like pretty well and then i uploaded the second tiktok which was just like a clip and then that started to do really really well Fifty thousand views i was like this is crazy and then i got like followers for the first time and then people would go over to my youtube and start to subscribe to that that's the moment i you love that you had not taken a break except four days since yes then. that is the moment that i was just like all right it's either i go all in on this and have and like maybe risk just nothing happening and just me wasting my time or i get something really really cool out of this i remember that i was like a hundred viewers for the first time literally all the streams were just me going oh my god there's so many people <laughs> so watching me right now puns actually another member of the dream smp he was looking for someone to raid and then some people in his chat were just like oh you should raid like this rambo guy rambo is that oh i'm raiding I'm raid and then he said if he fails the street speed bridge i'll raid him and then i immediately fell off as soon as he did that <laughs> 
So then I actually got the grade and everything, which was like, I think like 5,000 viewers. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yes, on radium. Puns rate, spam puns rate. Guys, hit the oh follow button. God. So you went from 100 viewers to 5,100 viewers. Pretty much just like having like a 3,000 viewer average on that one stream. Did oh, you your view wow. Count on time? Yes, I had my view count on the time and I was like, yeah, you know, not I was, stop looking I was at it. like, oh my God, it's so many people. After that, I was just like, okay, I'm going to just continue doing my Minecraft content and maybe put out a video every once in a while. I'll really focus on Streaming. But really focused on streaming because I was like the dream SMP was the goal. If I could get into that, then sky's the limit. So I made oh, a wow. tweet, which then I turned into a TikTok about reasons why I should join the dream SMP. And then that TikTok that I made from that tweet actually dream commented on it himself and said, "Let's do a PVP battle. If you win, I'll let you on." Why did he even bother? Oh wow. At that? I don't know. I just I guess I just came up on his for you page or something. It was it was the craziest thing. He actually added me on Discord as well after that, which was just like, okay, this has actually happened. So and imagine. within a couple of months you were right there alongside these people you were just a fan of. Yeah. Before. So then I went live and I all that. It. And then I started to do a bit on my stream where I was going to run for the president of Lemanberg on the Dream SMP. You did a bit that you were gonna run mm -hmm. for president of something that you that I was were not, not even allowed to be part of. Yeah, that I was not allowed <laughs> to be part of. Yes, to go for what you want that i can do for a while midway through when i was doing this bit fundy and phil had both just stopped a dream smp stream and they rated me at the same time with a total i think of like thirty thousand viewers and one of those people that were watching them was dream so then i look over on my second monitor to my discord and i see a dm from dream oh wow and then he asked me like what's your ign and then as soon as he said i was i, I just knew like oh this is happening today okay oh there we go it worked I am here. I am here now. Dream is intimidating. <laughs> this is, I'm scared. As soon as I ended the stream, I just went to my parents and I was just... <laughs> like in a, in a yeah, trance? Almost. I was, <laughs> I was like, okay, I think I have to cut down on some school stuff <laughs> because this might actually be my career. Were you doing any work at that time or was it just no, school? No, no. It was actually, I applied for, I think, six different jobs during that summer. Oh, yeah, wow. None of them hired me where did you apply i applied at a taco bell <laughs> i applied at like a local grocery store another taco bell i really wanted to work at a taco bell for some reason. uh yeah those yeah. chalupas and look what happened uh -huh. half price and look what happened, Taco Bell. Y'all ain't want to hire my friend, and now he is out here doing his damn thing. Yeah, thank you, Taco Bell, for not hiring Red Moon. Okay, because if y'all would have hired him, he wouldn't be here. So we're going to give a shout-out to Taco Bell for not hiring him because Red Moon. Okay, look where you at, friend. I'll take one. I know the discount. No one hired me, and I'm so glad that they didn't because I wouldn't have had exactly. to actually do anything. It's funny because a lot of people might feel defeated because they applied and were... Yeah ignored at six different places but it was a blessing for him defeats that lead to a blessing like, in disguise like what you're doing now yeah. you, would, you would not be here if you had those jobs because yeah. i really couldn't get a job anywhere this was kind of just like okay this is my last sort of option oh, i'm so proud of him there was a twitch leak revealing mm -hmm. the top streamer earnings and you were one of the highest paid streamers on twitch number 16. how has your life changed most financially from where you were before you started oh, wow. i've always been raised with a like conserving view for sure of money i think that's really really helped me kind of keep a level head when it comes to like my first like twitch actual twitch payout yeah. for me just like completely just blowing it all and i've been able to like help them out financially especially because like they they were like so supportive imagine your your child right going okay here's a job that may not work out that would require me to not do school it's called block game it's called playing my <laughs> if they had not been like really really supportive i don't think i would have been able to ever reach where i am now and oh I've been wow able to have them using the stuff that i make from playing that block game yeah. which is again i have a hard time oh, i love it today i grew up really financially insecure i have images in my head of my mom you know counting the bills and and you know entering into a calculator the amount uh that we would be able to afford on groceries if she you know took certain things off her list or added certain things i feel like that really uh, instilled in me this kind of i know that feeling fear though, of not being been financially there. secure like mm -hmm. wanting to always make sure that i was earning more and more to make sure that i would never have to worry about 
those struggles that I dealt with as a kid, mm -hmm. which I think has caused me in, in many ways to want to conserve my money too much to the point where I'm like, I don't oh, yeah. want to spend yeah. yes. money on myself. At all. Yes. Yeah. I still have a hard time like spending money on like things that are like not for content. I remember like we were we were shopping. There was like this shirt. I was just, like, oh, this shirt's really really cool, and it was like a hundred dollars. Yeah. I was, like, oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> that is a ridiculous price for a it shirt. It's a lot for a shirt. But many people, when they reach a position like you, don't think twice about. Oh yeah, something. no, I've been around people that like don't think twice about like spending like a, a ton of money on these yeah. things. So oh it's not wow. Really for me, if that makes sense. I understand exactly what he means. Do you feel like you were forced to grow up quickly with so many eyes watching your every single moment and judging your every move? Sometimes if you just take a step back and realize maybe I shouldn't be caring about this as much as I do, <laughs> then you'll actually be like a lot happier on the internet. Because mm -hmm. I remember that I used to care about a lot of things on the internet. Oh, really? You would like, nitpick about the way people said stuff? Yeah, and all the way that like I did stuff based oh. on like other people's like opinions of me. And I just realized oh, that wow. like people doing something on the internet won't affect me as much in real life as it actually does. Uh, you better say that, that Rambo. The way that I used to when I first started making content mm -hmm. where it was like a playground to, to have fun and yeah. to entertain and be entertained. Yeah. But I feel like progressively it's like this place that more real than real life mm -hmm. and where you're exposed to all the horrible things on this planet. I feel like <laughs> exactly. I became so focused on the negatives in the world mm -hmm. that the internet became a negative place for me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, oh, wait. I can have fun here. I can just, I can yeah. choose what to focus my energy on. I've had so many streams when I was, like, really, really caring about it where just one chat message would fly by and it would just ruin the rest of the stream. Mm -hmm. Even though there's thousands oh. of other really, really good ones, yeah. that one yeah. will always, like, stick in your mind. It's definitely a lot to take in, especially when you're, like, 17 and 18. Sometimes when you don't do anything wrong, mm -hmm. what happens is they put you up on a pedestal. Essentially. Then you're this perfect... That you like, better say that, Rambo. Which then just made me really uncomfortable. Oh. And then even put more pressure on me. If I was struggling with, I have to do everything perfectly. I have to always appease everyone. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that there just sometimes there's just not going to be people that will ever be happy with what you do or ever be happy with what you make. Wow. You better say that. Do you ever feel like your self-worth is attached to your numbers and your growth yes absolutely for like those 200 days how like happy i was directly was correlated on how many viewers i got that stream did you like have your oh view count wow up? Like, my, view, my view count was up i was consistently checking it i was consistently checking like subscriber count i had my youtube subscriber yeah count, my like twitter follower count, yeah I had my twitch follower count all up and then i realized that that was like way too much all at once when i got to the uk and i started to realize like oh stuff might be going down a little bit oh. i turned off everything i just thought that when the view count goes down that means that i'm doing something wrong but it's interesting Aww. because how good you feel mm -hmm. based on the number rising mm -hmm. is exactly how bad you'll feel when the number drops exactly so you almost have to desensitize yourself to the growth or fall completely you should care about how it does obviously if it does sure. bad then you should try to improve but you right. shouldn't care so much to the point where you think that you are a worst content creator or worst right. person because of that oh rambo do you get to walk around the streets without a disguise on at all before we continue learning about the world of rambo it all came so fast for me so i was so worried that it would leave so much faster uh -huh. i'd like to give a quick shout out to some previous episodes that you may find entertaining such as tubbo corpse dream carl and i also have an upcoming episode with should i spoil it should, okay i'll spoil it it's Mm, Wilbur Switch. Which, mm, I'd also like to thank HBO Max for sponsoring yeah. this episode. As well as yeah. HBO Max has kept my queue of things to stream stock. Come on, here. HBO Max. Too much amazing content, and they keep adding more stuff that I want to watch. And I'm like, well, hold on, stop adding so much good stuff. I already can't keep up. I'm already excited about Dune, and Succession season three, Insecure season five, and Curb season eleven. I'm like, God damn it, give me a break, please. Don't miss out on taking your entertainment. You better act, friend. The words tantalizingly trickle through their teeth, leaving me bereft of my mortal coil. I love it. And HBO Max is a streaming home of over 13,000 hours of addictive series, blockbuster movies, and exclusive originals. Start streaming on your favorite devices today. Sign up at hbom.ax slash spentadaydec. Mmm, that code rolls off the tongue. And that's not just a gift for you. That's also some support for this series, so thank you.
I'd also like to thank BetterHelp for their continued partnership. If you've been keeping up with this series for any amount of time, you know that therapy has been really helpful in shaping who I am today by allowing me to have empathy for my younger self and therefore understand my current self better. But therapy can be customized to whatever's right for you and can be useful in providing tools to help with motivation or feelings of depression, anxiety, stress, insecurity, or whatever else you might need. BetterHelp has been continuing to improve throughout the years and screens all therapists to ensure that they have experience and are certified and licensed and provides customized therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. Yes, you for the editing. Anyone or speak over the phone if that's not something that you're comfortable with. As I'm sure many of you have found out by now, therapy can be expensive and the price of finding a therapist that you like and actually connect with can be daunting which is why BetterHelp offers a more affordable alternative to in-person therapy where you can start communicating with your therapist in less than 48 hours. So thank oh. you to BetterHelp for giving us better day with viewers and listeners. 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Padilla. That's betterhelp.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Rick. I love the way he explains the... Do you get to walk around the streets without a disguise on at all? So usually I always kind of just wear the mask, not only because, well, COVID as well. True. Like, <laughs> but then I also just wear the mask always just in case. Do you think that you would have worn a mask if you started creating content before the pandemic, but like before masks were normalized in the U.S.? Yes. You think that you would I have think, I think yes. I probably would have. It was actually, it probably would have actually been a box head instead. Yeah, I ran a poll on Twitter and I was like, mask and glasses or box head? And I'm so glad that they chose the mask and glasses because I do not know how I would have been able to do <laughs> Box head would have been hell. I actually got one from, uh, from Crumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I did like a pancake stream with her. And I wore it the whole time and I was just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so cute. Do you get recognized a lot considering you are so recognized? Um, when it's just me on the street, I really only got recognized like a couple of times when I was in the UK. Someone came up to me and they just said, Oh, are you like random? I'm like, Oh, yes. You're like the first person to ever recognize <laughs> me without without someone else. You know you're watching Numero Uno. Mm -hmm. Have you dealt with anyone recognizing you when your glasses are off? Yes, it was actually like the first time I got recognized, it was with the glasses off. Oh. So they were just like, Do you want to put on glasses? And just, oh, they you know, actually yeah. recommended that you I love them. that. Yeah, I just said, Oh, I have my glasses, don't worry. And I yeah. just put them on. Because they're just all really respectful, which is Yeah. Cool. Is it tempting to reveal more and more personal information? Just because I feel like people mm. want it so much, you're like, Ooh, they love when I give a little bit of I'm, No, is I'm it all right. No. It's no. not tempting at all. I'd rather. Keep it I'm fine. Keep it I'm fine. How do you make a decision on what's worth uh, sharing and what's more worth mm. keeping? Ooh. So if someone else, like either has the same thing or is going through the same thing, then seeing someone that you watch, that you find entertainment, that you find comfort in, also having or doing that same thing can really help sometimes and make. I love that. More like normal. I love that. You used to stream almost 150 hours a month. Did you experience oh, wow. any burnout with that? Yes and no. I would lock myself in my room for like 10 hours a day, uh -huh. pretty much just strategizing and thinking about the next thing to do. And I would do that every single day. So even if I had like 150 stream hours, I think like my total work hours a month would be like closer to like 300. And oh, it took me wow. not doing that for a day when I went to the UK to realize I was really burnt Wait, just out. one day break from it? Not checking everything and not like analyzing absolutely everything oh, all the time. Oh, wow. Was for me to say. That really was not healthy. And I was like essentially forcing myself to do it. I know like when when I first got the opportunity to... to to like do stuff on on youtube I, I uploaded something and it started taking off i was i started to feel guilty like if i pass up this opportunity yeah that is so rare then i would i would be a fool you know i, I have yeah. to go full throttle mm -hmm. i was obsessively looking for those opportunities because it all came so fast for me so i was so worried that it would leave so much faster oh exactly What's next for Rambo? I'm actually thinking about uploading on YouTube more than once every 90 days. Oh! Yeah. Even in our last interview, you shouted out people to go uh, yeah. check out your channel. Yeah, I think you've only uploaded two, two videos. <laughs> <laughs> yep. My big, big project that I'm working on is a... Big project! Yeah, it's my analog horror series called um, Generation Loss. Analog horror is essentially, you know, like those like, creepy VHS tape videos. It's meant to be a 
fake VHS tape that has like creepy images, like stuff like pops up and everything. It's oh, like the ring. It's such a cool horror tool to the point where I was just like, I really, really want to do this. The first actual series that I'm oh. on is called The Lost Field Incident. The one Whoa. thing that I wanted to kind of explore with this channel was what if the tapes were actually found by a person? And then what would that person go through? Not only is it going to be the actual horror tape itself, but it's also going to be the story of the person who found those tapes in the first place. Mm, and is this oh, live action? Wow. And it's going to be like part live action and then part also the like the animated horror. tapes. Yeah. I hope to get it all done by the end of next year. How many episodes? The Lost Hill Incident is going to have three episodes, I believe. Three episodes within the next 12 months. Hopefully. Okay, so it's about the same as your YouTube, average YouTube upload rate. Basically, yeah, actually, <laughs> that's pretty accurate. Do you think that you will do YouTube and Twitch until the day you die? Yeah. If there are still people that watch me when I'm like 80, yeah. then I'll still do content when I'm 80. All right, you got five seconds to show I love that. anything you want directly into there. Go! If you want content that I that is actually being made by me and that will actually be uploaded on a regular basis, then um, look at my Twitch. Make sure that you are subscribed to Anthony Padilla because this has been the most... Yeah, you. Me? That's right, you. Oh, <laughs> yes, this has you. Been one of the most well-produced actual interviews that I've ever made. Oh, exactly. I've been on a couple, but this oh. definitely sets the bar. And that bar mm. is very tall, let me tell you. It's a very When, when he goes like this, it's not just a bar. It's a ceiling height bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. I spent a day I love it. One of the most gentle and warm people I've ever spoken to. Among so many obvious takeaways from today, Rambu really helped me realize how tempting it is to view yourself through the lens of how others perceive you and how tough it is to detach yourself. Exactly. From. And I feel like we could all learn something from Rambu's constant desire to grow and become more in tune with his own mental health. I love it! <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about this. The way that Anthony does an interview is like nothing else, you guys. I swear it's amazing. And I am here for it, honey. Very and then my dad helped me with like the strategy side of it as well. Sometimes stuff is recognizable. And I was just like, on some parts I was just like, eh, okay, you know, maybe. But then I didn't realize that I accidentally followed his advice with the whole black and white thing. And then I just ended up accidentally like ruining all black and white clothing. I'm sorry if you have black and white clothing <laughs> and you wear it outside. That means that you're that's, now a Rambo. That's man. my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, I almost missed that little cute part. I'm glad I looked down, honey. Period. Alrighty, you guys, there you have it. Me reacting to Anthony Padilla spending a day with Rambo, you guys. This was super duper incredible. And nobody does an interview like Anthony does an interview, you guys. I say that all the time. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up and then leave me a comment down below letting me know what you guys thought about this video. Also, Happy New Year's Eve and Happy New Year's, you guys. Thank you for spending time with me this year and watching my videos. It really has made me so happy, you guys. And I can't wait to see what 2022 has in store for us honey so be on the lookout you guys go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now and hit that bell so you guys get notified when i upload brand new videos like this don't forget to most importantly love yourself love someone else i will see you guys next year this is